In 2009, this paper reported that 75% of patients hospitalised for heart attack did not, in fact, have high LDL. Which leads to the question, if LDL doesn't cause heart disease, if it doesn't cause these atherosclerotic plaques, what does? Do we have a better alternative? This, a blood clot. I'm going to argue that your risk of clotting is a key risk factor in both developing atherosclerosis and dropping dead of a heart attack. The role of blood clots, which can be called thrombosis, in causing heart attacks is both, both well known and accepted. Fatty looking blockages like this often exist without any symptoms at all because there's still enough room for the blood to get past. A complete occlusion, however, as can be caused by a thrombosis or a blood clot, is a different story. Look on the right at the thrombosis. You can see it's filling the space where blood once flowed. In the wrong artery, this could easily prove fatal. What is less well known, however, is that these blood clots actually cause atherosclerotic plaques to form in the first place. You see, atherosclerotic plaques are basically healed blood clots. After a thrombosis or blood clot forms, it heals, but it does not completely disappear. And repeated episodes of thrombosis over time leads to the progressive buildup of a plaque. Here, you can see a single plaque with the lipid or cholesterol core covered by a layer of connective tissue. Compare that to this example with two layers of plaque, one on top of the other. The more recent thrombosis is sitting on top of an older one. In fact, this cyclical process can occur as many as four times at a single site within an artery. This still leaves us with the question though, of where do these crystals, these elongated shapes that we see in atherosclerotic plaques come from. It's been long accepted that they're made of cholesterol, which is released by LDL particles contained within these bulbous structures here called foam cells. The foam cell that you've just seen are formed when something called a scavenger receptor on a macrophage or a smooth muscle cell binds to a damaged LDL particle and ingests it. These foam cells then store the cholesterol bound with fatty acids in droplet form. Now foam cells don't like to release this cholesterol. That's what makes them foam cells in the first place. It makes it hard for them to contribute to cholesterol crystals. As you know, there's a big difference between a droplet and a crystalline deposit that you see in atherosclerosis. To make the crystals, you actually need pure cholesterol. What then can provide the ingredients for these crystal shapes that we see in atherosclerotic plaques? And red blood cells is the answer. Their outer membrane contains more free cholesterol than any other cell in the body. And not surprisingly, red blood cells are quite abundant in blood clots. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.